and Scylla, Gennaro's wife. And Don Gennaro met uh, Jenny's husband. Yes. Thank you. What's, what's your business and what's the nature of your business? We produce fine Italian style food delicacies in the tradition of my husband's family, made from local Tasmanian ingredients as much as we can find them. What's your business called? It's called uh, Gennaro's, well, that's one of the labels that we do. The umbrella that we have is Tasmania. So we produce a number of different um, labels, if you like, under the umbrella organisation called Tasmania, which we haven't quite achieved yet. We're still just wanting to commercialise Gennaro's, to use that as a, as a model or a template for the other labels that will, uh, that will produce um, largely from valuating to the original one. Mm. Gennaro, would you like to give us the range of uh, products that you produce? Oh, under my label, that is the Gennaro's label, um, they're mainly uh, jams um, with fruit totally sourced from Tasmania. Mm -hmm. um, the mainstay is uh, apricot, um, fresh fig, uh, rhubarb, and in winter we source quinces for quince paste and fig and quince paste. Mm -hmm. I notice at the market you also produce uh, breads? Yes, we do. And I bake. Um, a range of um, bread all made from very high quality, strong, high protein flour. Mm -hmm. What's the structure of the organisation? Our organisational structure is very simple, it's just the two of us. Yes. <laughs> so it's very seasonal because we don't use frozen products mm -hmm. and that's part of what makes our product very good. You can taste it. We, at the moment, we just supply to a Tasmanian, a local Tasmanian distributor, uh, Exquisite Flavours, and he does the, the distribution. However, at Sutter Market, which is our, I suppose, our main retail outlet, the, the only one that uh, we're involved with, we have many, many people coming from interstate who remember us from over a decade ago when we were doing this in Melbourne, yeah. who have uh, sought us out and continually continually sending out rescue packages. Mm. Um, You've talked about it being seasonal. What other cycles in terms of fruit and uh, just even weekly cycles are involved in the business? There are no real weekly cycles, it's seasonal cycles. The order in which I mentioned the fruit before is, is pretty much the, the seasonal structure, the flow. Mm. Um, apricots really start in late January, early February um, and then we go into feeds in about March, April. Um, rhubarb we can source pretty much all year, mm. fresh. Um, and then quince um, is June, July. We do a Seville marmalade and it's a late winter orange. Mm. Um, so that's the, the order of the production flow. Bread obviously is all every week yes. fresh. What about suppliers? Give me an idea of the range of suppliers that you do with and the types of, uh, of products that you source from those suppliers. There is only one uh, jar glass supplier um, and that currently is Cospac. Um, the other suppliers are the um, orchards that we deal with. Um, there is the apricot orchard, a uh, rhubarb grower up in Scottsdale, oh, the apricots come from Campania. Um, fresh figs uh, from Launceston, quinces from Kettering. Uh, the sugar we use is from CSR, which is obviously important. Um, I guess most of Australia, Queensland. And what about the relationships with your distributors? You mentioned exquisite flavours. Uh, how do you uh, arrange with them to meet uh, demand? They ring us and said, we need more of X, Y, Z. And so we go and package it all up and uh, Gennaro drops it in. And how do you anticipate demand, uh, meet demand and so on? That's very difficult for us. I guess it depends on, on their, their increasing distribution. With the market at, at Salamanca, it's very seasonal, so we know from experience that it's going to be busier in summertime 
And we have learned recently that the punters are really more after food to go or bread or something like that. We started producing bread to offer the tastes of the jam on, and they kept wanting to have <laughs> more of the bread. So we saw that as an opportunity of being able to increase um, the income. But now other wholesalers, or not wholesalers, but retail outlets are also after the bread. So it's, it's not really our core business, but it's a, it's a useful adjunct. Um, so it's in winter time it's very quiet. There's, there's not a lot of people coming through. And uh, so we have to do more of the posting out to Sydney, to, to Melbourne, to Queensland, which is why we've been trying to commercialise our distribution. We used to just have a little label that I printed on the computer. And that was in the days before we had to have all of the, the food regulation information. I took the colours, I matched the colours of the products because they were fresh and natural and local and fine-tuned it into, into these labels which we need to, we need to start uh, producing more of. At the moment, we're just printing them off with the fine laser printer of our local print shop and Paul does a fantastic job down there. But it's, a, it's a, a very expensive way of generating labels. Fortunately, I'm a graphic designer. Um, I was in the olden days. And, um, and so I was able to, to generate these myself and, to, and to, to produce this. I can't drive the computers, but I was able to stand over the shoulder of someone who was happy to generate the artwork according to my um, um, requirements. And each one of the labels has a story about Tasmania and about our wonderful produce and about Gennaro's um, heritage and, and making things by hand. Mm -hmm.